Joining me now is Mark Joseph Stern. He's a senior writer at Slate who's been covering this story. Very excited to talk to him. And back with me, Latasha Brown. She's the co-founder of Black Voters Matter Fund, and she has been doing voter registration work all across this country, helping to save democracy. So happy to have them both. Um, I want to start with you, Mark, because if the government um, gave these, these folks the green light to vote, it seems to me this is a Ron DeSantis mess up, not the voters. Uh, that is exactly right, uh, because the way it works in Florida is that you submit your voter registration application through your county election office. They forward it right along to the Department of State and the Division of Elections. And that agency, which is run by Ron DeSantis appointees, has the responsibility to search your name against a database that only that agency has access to and decide, figure out whether you have a record of a disqualifying felony offense. If the agency does not flag your name, then it sends your application back to the county and says, guess what? This person's good to go. They are registered to vote, sign them up, send them a card, and invite them to participate in elections again. Yeah, so I maybe I have too many conspiracy theories in my mind. Is it possible that his administration was intentionally giving people the green light just so they could stage this whole ridiculous farce of arresting people for voting now. Here's what I think happened. His administration really fell down on the job of flagging and cross-checking names of people who have these disqualifying offenses. Clearly, these offices that he staffed, that answered to him, were not doing the work that they are obligated to do under state law to cross-check every single voter who registers and ensure that they aren't disqualified. And what happened was, after after a few years of falling way behind, he decided, well, we're going to form this election police force and we're going to start going after some of the very people who we green lighted to vote. So I don't know if it was intentional, literal entrapment, but it sure comes close to that line the way that it was done here. Yeah, and I certainly can't imagine uh, a prosecutor following up with this or a jury convicting Latasha. Uh, Latasha, you remember Amendment 4. Our good friend Desmond Mead down there in Florida was leading a lot of that work. Um, Ron DeSantis essentially overturned the will of the people by uh, instituting a poll tax essentially after that. What impact do cases like this have on voter turnout in a state as crucial as Florida, where uh, there's a black woman running uh, for Senate, Val, Congresswoman Val Demings running for Senate? They have a lot of vested interest in not letting that happen. You know, Tiffany, I said over and over again, there's always been three tactics used by those who didn't want, don't want people to participate in the democratic process. One has always been around restricting access to the ballot, literally second around weaponizing the administrative process, but third is about creating a culture of fear. You know, in this, what has just happened in Florida, let me just say one point of one case, one of the men that was arrested, who actually had received documentation that said that he could register, he was awakened out of his home at 6 a.m. by the SWAT. They actually wow. had a helicopter and had uh, police officers in the back of his home for, for, for a uh, mistake that the state made. Like, that's overkill. That's not just overkill. That's political theater. What DeSantis is doing right now is he's creating political theater to create this culture of fear because the margin of victory for him, he's really worried about making sure that he positions himself, not just for the governor of the state of Florida, but he's literally trying to position himself to assume this position, this heir apparent for Trump, so that he can run for office for president. And so we have to really be able to call this what it is. I do believe, you know, you can call me a conspiracy theorist, you can say cynicism, but I do believe that there was a not only responsibility of the state, but I think that there was something that was that is that is awry in this process. Earlier this year, there were four people who were also arrested that were in Republican districts that we didn't have a press conference around, we didn't hear anything around. Quite frankly, they were actually arrested for voting twice. Why was he silent on that? So I think what you're seeing right now is DeSantis is actually playing out political theater so that he can create this culture of fear and do as he's always done uh, to create this environment so that people can say that, oh no, the elections are not right when it does not come out in my face. Right, and that's very frightening. Imagine being woken up out of your sleep with the SWAT team uh, at your door. That is very frightening. We've seen people die from that. Um, you know, we were talking, uh, Mark, uh, about DeSantis. Look, DeSantis, he's a lot more dangerous than Trump, like we were talking about. He may not look it, but he's smarter than Trump. You know, Trump was a useful idiot. DeSantis is smart. While he's having people arrested, I just want to remind our viewers that he took $50,000 during his campaign from a sham company when he was running for governor from two South Florida uh, business 
businessmen who Lev Parnas, uh, who who we remember, and Igor Fruman. Uh, whatever happened with that? He's not arrested. You know, <laughs> I mean, maybe we should be looking into his background truly. But this this effort to suppress the vote there is there any effort to combat that? Because this is clearly a part of his. The, the, even when he announced these charges, it looked like a presidential announcement. I mean, it looked like he was definitely positioning himself to do something. What's his political ambition? Here? Uh, it, it was a spectacle, of course. Yeah. And I think you're right. It was all about setting up not just the 2022 governor's race, in, in which he's in a, a real tight contest with Charlie Crist, but yeah. also the 2024 presidential race. Yeah. And he wants to prove that he is Trump-like in all the ways that matter to Republicans, that he will ruthlessly suppress the votes of people likely to be Democrats, of racial minorities. Let's remember, all the individuals arrested in this raid on, on voters, they were all in blue counties. These were likely Democratic voters. He didn't hold a whole press conference when the people in the villages, that right. Republican community got arrested. But here, he you know, wanted to bring them before cameras and humiliate them. So he is not only uh, expressing his ambition to ruthlessly suppress votes and attack democracy to win, but also putting a target on the back of every former felon yeah. and telling them, if you try to vote, we may arrest and incarcerate you. Yeah. Uh, you know, I would just say to the good folks from Florida, vote. Vote. Um, you know, the people faced nightsticks, dogs, blood, worse, uh, to defend this democracy and exercise their uh, civic engagement. And I hope that the people of Florida are not deterred by this kind of kabuki theater uh, that could really result in a loss of life, quite frankly. Uh, thank you so much, Mark Joseph Stern, for your wonderful, excellent reporting. This is why print reporters matter very much. Uh, and to Latasha Brown for continuously defending democracy. And